Here's Joel at breakfast and uh, his friend, Jack. He's rushing towards Joel. It's all about doors around here, really. It is. I like these ones. I feel like at all times I might be about to be hit by a motorbike or a bicycle. I would have to say my favourite benefit to drinking cane sugar is certainly irresistible constipation. Okay, so we're leaving the walled part of the city now. Away. If your itinerary includes you know, Tangier, Fez, Marrakesh, Casablanca, and then you come here, quite a relief from the hustle of bustle. Whereas yeah. for us, it was quite the opposite. So we came up from the south, where it's nowhere near as busy and quite remote, and this felt like the big smoke for us. <laughs> us small towners. Huh? The other thing is, is although it, yes, it's the largest town we've visited, we haven't come across a chain of a restaurant or a store or a hotel. Yeah, which is amazing. Checking out the fishing port here. Cats and seagulls are loving this place. The aroma is not inspiring. We just came back um, from the street where we bought some vegetables. Got some sauteed vegetables in here, and we've got some rice and lentils boiling in here. We eat in a lot to save money, but also it can be healthier. Um, sometimes you just don't feel like going out. But what's interesting is that I feel stuck for ideas because it, it's difficult to buy things that aren't tagine ingredients, really. So like spices and stuff, or you know, buying coming across a bag of rice was a good find. So yeah, even when we eat at home, we still eat a lot of tagine. Okay. Here we are, all of our new friends. We wow. have Bonjour. We have Pascal, Cyril, Hello. and Frederic. Frederic. And we are at a winery in Morocco, which is maybe a little bit unusual, but we're here for a tour. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what the French think of the Moroccan wine. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a mix of olive trees. They also make the olive oil. Many virgin trees get in there. They pull them out because they pull all the nutrients from the soil, leaving none left for the vine. But apparently, the argan is much more expensive, and the owner here is French, and so therefore, we grow wine. Is this white or gray wine? Delight. Yeah, it is good. What do you think? Okay, here comes the real verdict. I like the form, it's amazing. Strong? It's like dry, but uh, nice, very nice. Yeah? Strong, strong. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I'm not quite to my palate. <laughs> <laughs> There's something smart ass. I'm in, inside the, the barrel. The barrel yeah. yeah. It's it has a stronger taste. Maybe heavier. Character, yeah. Character, yeah. Like I'm in the earth. It's Maybe wrong, in the barrel. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Let's see there. how I do. Would you describe it as sharp? Mm. Very French. What's the verdict on your Moroccan wine experience? Um, they have grey wine here. That was interesting. We mm -hmm. liked it. It's Pascal's favorite, the grey wine. Ask him. It's better. How do you feel towards the grey? I prefer the grey. The grey wine. How would you describe the Moroccan wine? In a metaphor. Use a metaphor. What's uh, metaphor know, in the, French? The, the manager is French. So... <laughs> 
That no. was the perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> His favorite wine was the one that tasted like French wine. <laughs> Arrived at the fromagerie for some fromage chèvre, right? Right. Ah, merci. She caught me. <laughs> what do you think of your cheese? Uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it goat cheese what we're trying? What do you think of the cow cheese? Yeah, it's better than the For sure. Yeah. <laughs> What is this? That's the chef, the fromage, the chef, the brebis, fresh. Fresh. Yeah. Oh, I think it's my favorite. Like cream cheese, but better. What? Yeah. Okay, give it up. Okay, so we are off right now um, to interview someone we're pretty excited to get to know a bit more. Um, his name is Aziz, and he was our waiter at a restaurant that we went to the other night. So he's got a sort of, uh, like, a good vibe about him. I don't really like using those kinds of words, like auras and vibes, but he's just got to... Travel is changing, Joel Pennington, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. So, this is Aziz. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I brought up in an orphanage from a German yep. woman. Aziz's mom was on a trip to Morocco when she found him abandoned at the side of the road, only a few days old. Not knowing what to do, she scooped him up and in that moment unofficially adopted him. At this time here in Morocco it was a difficult time for a woman who so has children without marriage. Then uh, I was seven, eight. I needed to go to the school. She needed a good idea to hold me, to not lose me. This is when Aziz's mom got the idea to start an orphanage to get proper papers for Aziz and the other abandoned children she'd started taking care of. So you didn't speak Arabic at first because you lived with your mom, who spoke yeah. German, right? Yeah, that's true. So they brought us a teacher, teach us uh, English, uh, French, and uh, Arabic because uh, we needed the Arabic to, to, to for the school. Year by year, the, the number of the children grown up. <laughs> yes. At least 2008, we was uh, 73 children. Wow. Uh, this is Emma, also my sister. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Beth, nice to meet you. At 2008, the Moroccan state uh, stopped the orphanage. We lost them. They distributed them uh, in the orphanages here in Mar Marrakesh, in Casablanca, in Sawira. So the, to your mom, when they um, took apart her orphanage, she was sent back to Germany, right? Yeah, she was sent back to Germany. So did you go to one of those orphanages? Yeah, I was afraid I didn't want to get a new system, uh, an orphanage system, because we was living like a family, a big family. I was uh, in the street. I was sleeping in a garden in Marrakesh. I was selling cigarettes from morning till the evening. It was uh, difficult for, for me. I did this 15 days till I get uh, some, uh, so much money that I could rent uh, a small room. I came back uh, because of the children. That was my first motive. The second, I am a sun kid, child. You like the sun, you're like Joel. <laughs> I, I love the sun. Aziz knew that this year, six of his brothers and sisters will turn 18 and be kicked out of the orphanages and onto the street with an incomplete education, nowhere to live, and no job. By chance, he gets into contact with his old English teacher from the orphanage. So you started helping her three, four days ago? No, it's my fault. She wanted to sell it because it wasn't going well, but yeah. you want to manage it. And yeah, turn it I around presented to her. her that I will manage the, the restaurant. And you want to kind of turn it into a social enterprise, like you want your brothers and your sisters to come here and learn a little bit about waiting, about cooking, about the hospitality industry. I want that they learn and I want this, that they get a profession. It's good to have someone who dirige the, the, the children who yes. say to them, look, this world has so much stones, but this world is better for you. I hope my whole life a big brother for them. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I hope also so that they take me also like a big brother. <laughs> the strongest thing what I, I have uh, 
fulfill in my life is, is, is the love of my mom. Yeah. She is not near to me, but she is still thinking about me and about the other child yeah. every day, every yeah. morning. She has plants in her house and every plant has a name of us. Your brothers and sisters are very lucky to have you. I'm, I'm very lucky to have them. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, and if you want to get the full story on Aziz's amazing life, you can check out the blog I wrote on him. It's linked below. Uh, and if you want to support Aziz and his 72 brothers and sisters, um, here's how you can do that. So one, go visit his amazing uh, vegan-friendly restaurant in Esuera. Two, there's a RIA that's gotten on board to help out with the cause, and you can support them by staying there, and that's linked below as well. And three, um, you can let people know about his amazing story. The more people who know about him and his mission, the better. Yeah. And uh, four, there is a charity that's gotten on board. So if you don't plan on traveling to Esuara, um, then you can contribute directly through that charity and that's linked below as well. Um, was it the last point? Yeah. <laughs> So we really hope that you enjoyed watching and that we've inspired you to support some local entrepreneurs wherever you are. So that's it from us, and we will see you guys next time. Bye!